Welcome back to Kettlebells and Cocktails. This is our weekly edition of The Weekly Buzz, aptly named. I have Joe Jenison Palawa here from The Morning Chalk Up. How's it going, Joe? All right, Nikki. How are you? Good. How many times can I say weekly in one intro? That's mm-hmm. kind of what we're trying to <laughs> trying to break the record here. We're still going. That was one more. We're- I know, and I'm going to do it again. If you're new to the Weekly Buzz, this is our partnership with The Morning Chalk Up, where Joe comes on at the start of each week to go over some of the top headlines happening within the CrossFit space, everything from the competition side of things to the affiliate side of things. And this week, we have a, oh, does that count? Because I said week and not weekly. Oh, oh, I don't who know. Knows? Who knows? This week, we do have a jam packed episode for you guys because there's a lot going on and several things that we want to review. So, Joe, I'm going to ask you to start out on the competitive side of things because, man, there are so many big names Mm -hmm. doing so many big things in the coming months. What is the latest and greatest? Yeah, that's a good place to start. So if you're a fan of the sport, the first couple of weeks of December are going to be an early Christmas. We've got even some competing competitions or events going on. So multiple events in the same weekend. So let's kind of break it down and talk about what we have coming up. In the first week of December, December 1st through the 3rd, we've got the Down Under Championship. You and I have talked about this. This is the biggest off-season competition in Australia, and it is taking place in Wollongong in New South Wales. We've talked about the teams and rosters, but there was one more team announced slid in just under the gun, the bro dogs, Ricky and Benny Garrard and Spencer Panchik. What a, what a combo. What Cannot a combo. say that I am, I can't say I saw that coming, but <laughs> I like it. I'm here for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, me too. And so with that announcement, the Down Under Championship has locked their roster and they are ready to go with an elite women's division, elite men's division, and then elite teams of three on both sides. Fun. We've talked about some of the cool teams, the California girls with the women from Invictus. We've talked about the team of Chandler Smith, Noah Olson, and Tola Marquino, and some of the other folks who are showing up. Sarah Sigmund's daughter on the individual side, Annika Greer, a bunch of the Australian homegrown favorites, Maddie Sturt, Laura Clifton, among others. The team Frog Grips on the men's side with some of the Australian elite men. Really looks like a cool competition. They will have a live stream. Great. So that, yeah, that's so, great. So they'll have all the action live streamed on YouTube on their YouTube channel. If you are on our side of the globe, pay attention to the time change, obviously. Yeah. But that will be the first weekend in December. The next weekend is when things start to get really crazy. December 8th through the 10th, there are two big, big events going on. One is the Dubai Fitness Championship taking right. place annually in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates this year, invitation only. And simultaneously in Birmingham, UK, FitFest 2023, which will include amongst a bunch of really interesting community events, a pro CrossFit athlete showcase. Let's start with Dubai. So at least one athlete, I think, having gone through the rosters, one athlete will be hopping on a plane on the 3rd or 4th of December and heading to Dubai from down under. And that is Ricky Garrard. Ricky is competing on the team side at down under and then heading to Dubai for the individual event. Huh. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. I wonder what Justin Cutler has to say about that. We would have to ask. Absolutely. The competition has been announcing slowly rolling out athletes. And some really big names, we've got Roman Krenikov will be competing Mm -hmm. there alongside Ricky, Yona Koski, um, Lazar Jukic, as well as a lot of great European athletes so far on the men's side. David David Bronislaw is going to be competing, Reggie Fossa, among others. I'm leaving some folks out here, but there will be more announcements. Hold on, wait. This is important. Did I ever tell you about the time that I asked Bron if anyone calls him the Bronny man ever? (laughs) which is a hilarious no. joke. This was years ago. This was a million years ago. Nobody knew who he was, but I had gone to Dubai a few times for mm-hmm. DFC, DCC, whatever it was over those years. Yeah. And I was like, ha do people ever call you the brawny man? And he straight up looked at me like I had 10 heads and he was like, what is that? 
swear it was a funny joke. Maybe you had to be there. But anyway, now we all know and love Braun. So mm. excellent lineup of athletes and a ton of people who are just like big and strong, which is good because oh, yeah. I feel like Dubai programming sort of lends itself to some bigger, heavier weights, some yeah. more awkward implements sometimes. So it'll be always fun to to see those guys put on a show. And anyway, sorry to cut you off there, Joe. On the women's side of things, who's going to be heading to Dubai? Yeah, similar story. A couple of women from this side of the world, Emily Rolfe and Lauren Fisher, are both making the trip. Fisher coming off that great performance at Rogue la uh, yeah. last week, as well as some great European athletes, Karen Frey, Andrea Solberg, Taylor Howe, as well as some of the standout Middle Eastern athletes as well. Sarah Kaya and Shahed the Debs. That's awesome. I always love that they have some of their sort of like local homegrown talent in Dubai because the crowd loves to see them. There's so much wonderful local support. And I think that's really badass. So it'd be really fun to watch. Yeah, they're rolling out a few workouts so far. There have been a couple announced. One is the Dubai Classic event that includes some of those fun movements the deck squats or the 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 a jumps and the deck squat mm -hmm. those are some those are some fun movements from from back in the day I believe from the first dubai i think it was the dcc then the dubai crossfit championship now now it goes by the name of the dubai fitness championship um, i think that's how it started back in the day before oh, okay. it was a crossfit sanctioned event it was dfc and then it was dcc now it's dfc again yeah there who it knows goes. what it'll be next year mm -hmm. throw in all the letters of the alphabet but I agree with you. There's always some some really fun stuff, either running up and down sand dunes, running up the building, the, the Burj Khalif. Um, mm -hmm. There's all... always cool stuff in the water there. Yeah, like they're yeah. in sort of like different areas that, that have access to big waves or, oh my gosh, indoor ski slope stuff. Oh, there's yeah, running so up many... the ski slope. Yeah. 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 So many different things that you can do in Dubai and they take advantage of all of it. So I love yeah. when competitions really make it their own by incorporating some of their local, local things like that. So very cool. Yeah. So super fun. We're going to be continuing to watch for more roster announcements there. I think we're expecting somewhere between maybe five to seven more uh, announcements um, over the next couple of weeks here. And then heading back over to the Fit Fest 2023. Now, this is being billed as an athlete showcase. So there are three teams that are uh, that are each captained by a, a female athlete. So we've got Team Danielle Brandon. Team Emma Lawson and Team Ella Vunger. And these are teams of six total athletes, three and three. So Team Vunger, for example, has Ella Vunger, Alex Gazan, Kelsey Keel, Pat Vellner, Jack Farlow, and Yella Hosty. Emma Lawson's team includes Emma, Jennifer Muir, Lucy McGonigal, Nick Matthew, Brent Fakowski, and Enrico Zanoni. And Danielle Brandon's team includes Brandon, Ariel Lowen, Dallin Pepper, Turi Helgadotter, Jason Hopper, and BKG. Dang. So this is a, a super cool showcase of mm -hmm. some amazing athletes. They will compete over two days. And each one of those days will have two competition blocks. So between an hour and a half and two hours. That's all I know about the schedule as of right now. But, oh, man, I can't wait to see what how this is going to play out. Yeah, it's really cool. And so the whole point of Fit Fest is all of these sort of community style events that have I would I call us everyday crossfitters, yeah. right? Like anyone who wants to kind of show up off the street, our weekend warrior people, people who are going to local affiliates or whatever. And then the elite part of it is just a is kind of just for us to watch for fun. Like they're not really, they, they're going to get bragging rights. They're probably all being paid to be there. But it's not a real traditional competition. It's just, hey, while all this stuff is happening, this fun festival of mm -hmm. fitness, mm -hmm. you also get to watch some of the best names in the world do their thing. And it's kind of like all in one. So, so you're exactly right. This is a super cool, cool event all around. Some of it's community based and 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 I'll mention a couple of those events but there's some other high level competition going on here as well that's I I not sh not a showcase or exhibition but but an actual competition but the English weightlifting championships is going to take place during this weekend during oh, cool. the event the British indoor rowing championships hey. are going to be going on and then the on the community side as you mentioned strength and depth is running a community event called the triple threat and 
there's another event going on called the AHX Games Open. And this I was reading about looks really cool. It's kind of in the style of a high rocks race in cool. that you're doing a bunch of different stuff in a row. And it, and it takes, I believe it, it goes over the course of an hour and a half to two hours, but mm -hmm. there are breaks built in. So you, you get 20 minutes to build up to, I believe it's a, it's a heavy shoulder press and then a 10 rep max back squat. But then you get a 20 minute window to go to the nutrition and recovery area. And there yeah. you will be fed and watered and people work on your body and there's recovery equipment for 20 minutes. Then you go to the endurance portion of the event where you'll run a 5K on like an assault run or like a curved treadmill and then do some longer distances on the ski erg and the bike and things like that. Mm. Then another recovery and nutrition break. And then a Metcon section where you will where, where there'll be a couple of programmed Metcons and that's that's the event. So it's oh, kind cool. of like kind of like the gauntlet at Wadapalooza or a high rocks race where it's like an hour to two hours long, but it it works in snack breaks, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. But also I wouldn't be able to snack on anything if I was about to go out and run a 5K in like 20 minutes. So you have you must snack wisely. Choose yeah, there you your go. snacks wisely. That is all really interesting and really busy. So those Dubai yeah. and Fit Fast, those are going to be happening in the same, at the same time weekend, right? Yeah, okay, so lots time. of fitness for us to be able to watch. Hopefully, I don't think there's a, a ton of information yet in terms of how we will be able to kind of like keep up with those events. But hopefully there are streams or things that we can do. And then also, Joe, for Fit Fest, we don't really know the format of the Athlete Showcase yet, do we? So we don't really know if it's mm. like, individual events and you just rack up points for your team yeah. or are they doing things as teams of six like we don't really have those details we don't have those details and i am working on getting them well, that's <laughs> so perfect. we can talk more about it yeah but what a bunch of great action for fans of the sport here in the first part of december really looking yeah. forward to that i'm ready and that also is friggin tomorrow it feels like oh we're gosh. already yeah, <laughs> already a week into november i don't even know i know uh, where this year is going and later year later like later this week the morning chalk up is publishing a piece on if you want to crush the open what you should be doing now not ready for that mm -hmm. joe mm -hmm. you keep that article right to yourself <laughs> <laughs> i am not ready to think about how not ready i am for the open <laughs> but hey let's let's turn our attention to affiliate and community we published a really cool piece last week with Scott Panchik on how to avoid burnout. We talk about this with elite athletes, particularly in the last year or two, we've seen some high profile athletes talk about burnout, take a season off, or just talk about how they've, they've at various points in their careers dealt with this. Panchik as kind of like a Cal Ripken type figure, meaning the sort of long streak of really consistent high performance, had some great insight for us. I think some of these things, well, all of these things are for, as you said, kind of the everyday CrossFitters, not just mm -hmm. for the elite athlete here, but we always talk about overtraining. He talked about the importance of rest days and the importance that we take those rest days, that we listen to our bodies, that we do the kinds of things like get outside the gym, go for a nice long walk for an active recovery day, as opposed to continuing to just pound away at the weights in the gym day in and day out. He talked about how gym, how affiliate owners and coaches can break up the monotony maybe of like CrossFit workout after CrossFit workout after CrossFit workout. And he talked about things doing, doing things like, like a pump and run where you do like a bench press workout into a one mile run or a two mile run or something. And so, so you kind of get outside of the gym, do something fun, but also get that kind of bodybuilding work in and, and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. He talked about the importance of using our fitness outside of the gym, playing pickleball, playing mm -hmm. tennis or pickup basketball or, or, or whatever, but just to kind of break it up. So that's a good reminder for all of us and a great piece to just kind of check out. It's always great to talk to Scott and to get his insight as one of the true legends of the sport. For sure. I think that's a really important uh, article that you guys put together with him because I think that we do talk about it really only in the sense of the elite athletes. And if we're out here crossfitting to make the world a healthier, fitter place, right? 
And if we're really like we, you and I, and every individual is stepping mm -hmm. into the gym on a daily basis to just live a healthier life, to be able to do the kind of stuff that we want to do, I want to be able to run around with my kids for years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then we really are the ones that shouldn't be burning out. Truly, not the the one percent of the elite athletes out there that are doing this for their for their careers. I mean, they shouldn't yeah, be yeah. either. But we really are the ones that that we should be focusing this conversation on because it is hard, man. It's hard mm -hmm. to stay in a routine. It's hard to get into the gym every single day. It's hard to eat healthy around the holidays, around birthdays, around whatever. It's hard to go on vacation for a week and then come back and actually get back into the gym. Like all that stuff is really hard. So if we can figure out how to not burn out. Oh yeah, on fitness. Then yeah. we, as a as a community, can really set the standard for a long term health and yep. longevity. So that's important. It's such a cliche to say that it's a marathon, not a sprint. This it's kind true. of lifelong health, the lifelong health and fitness, but but it really is. It it's mm -hmm. not what you do in the gym today that matters, but it's what you do in the gym today that allows you to come back to the gym tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I yeah. think that's really important. And that marathon and sprint analogy there is. A really ham-handed segue into our oh, food yeah. of the month Get for on. November 26.2 CrossFit. Yes. I bet you can I, guess what they're into. I see the relation. <laughs> so we had a lot of folks writing into us over the last couple of months uh, talking about using CrossFit or how they've used CrossFit to train for triathlons and marathons and things like that. Folks from CrossFit Mayhem wrote in and talked about how they were training for I believe it was a trail run. Alan, Adam Neifer and the folks up in Washington State were training, trained for marathon, trained for a marathon recently. We had the woman who did the double DECA triathlon in Switzerland, which was like thousands of miles of running and biking over the course of a month. Oh my God. And, and so we thought that we would feature an affiliate that its, it's kind of sole existence is based on training folks to do endurance training and using CrossFit to do so. So this gym, was it's, it's a 14-year affiliate at this point, and it's run by a coach named Ali Newell. And he admits that he was a horrible runner. He went to a running seminar like 15 years ago, and they, they said at the running seminar, we have probably not seen anyone run as bad as you ever. And so he started to train he was already into CrossFit. He said he's been into CrossFit since 2007. Since then, he has finished 12 marathons. He's helped more than 1,500 CrossFitters check off, run a marathon off their bucket list. Dang. And I think the other cool thing is he kind of like turns it on its head, and he also works with marathon runners, introducing them to CrossFit. So folks mm. who, have already, who are already established in endurance sports using CrossFit then to extend their careers, to improve their times and things like that. So I think that's a super cool, super cool thing they're doing at 26.2 CrossFit. And they've been doing it, like I said, for 14 years now. That is very, very cool. I know I've said this on the show before. I myself used CrossFit to train for the New York City Marathon in 2017. I'm a horrendous runner. <laughs> that when, when Allie got to the to the seminar and they said that they've never seen anyone run worse they hadn't than seen you because they hadn't seen me run yet. <laughs> But it was one of the best things that I could have done for my training because obviously you can't avoid the long runs. You can't avoid getting those miles in under your belt. Yep. But everything else that I did in and around that time, just in my affiliate with regular programming, I didn't even really change much outside of what was programmed for the classes on a daily basis, allowed me to keep my strength. And so I didn't lose anything in my strength, even though I was, yep. and I trained for a year. Like that's how bad I am yeah. at running, Joe. <laughs> I needed 12 months of training under mm -hmm. my belt. I started really slow but was able to get right back to my numbers and never had to adjust my numbers for anything. And, and that's awesome. Was great. And that's really what he does. He, he talked with us about how for the, for the, for people who just want to finish a marathon, they're not trying to run a sub three hour marathon or run a right. two and a half hour or whatever kind of marathon. They're wanting to finish a marathon. They basically do two, two long runs a week and the rest of the time they're doing CrossFit. So these are folks that he conditions and trains to run 26.2 miles, having never run more than 12 miles in a training run. So I think that's pretty cool. Wow. I need to get on that kind of plan <laughs> for my next one then. That sounds mm -hmm. way better than what I did. Let's, yeah. uh, let's just do a quick little roundup to, to wrap things up for today. Right. There's a few little news, news bits here. 
Dale King, who you and John are interviewing this week, yes. is programming CrossFit.com. Um, Very cool. For this two-week blog. It started today. His first workout, the first workout he programmed was the Hero Workout Liam, but which involves some running, toes to bar, front squats. I forget what else. It's a it's a it's a killer workout. And and the running is a plate run, so it's a burden run. Yeah. Oh, rope climbs. That's what it is. Sorry. Toes to bar rope climbs and front squats in the middle between mm -hmm. two eight hundred meter runs with a plate. So that's his right. first workout. He is gonna program thirteen more. So we'll get a chance to see what he what he has in mind for us. And for those who need the reminder, Dale King is the kind of the the, the center figure for the documentary Small Town Strong about the ways in which he and his affiliate and his businesses in Portsmouth, Ohio are using fitness, using cross methodology to help people fight um, their opioid addiction and helping um, the community fight the broader fight against opioid addiction um, in, in Ohio. Yeah, that's right. Dale's a great guy. He's been on our show many, many times. We are going to interview him again this week. And so that show should air sometimes next week as well. We'll talk to him about all the programming yeah. uh, that he's working on for the site. We'll talk to him about the movie, whatever else he's got going on. He's sort of like a leader on the affiliate side of things yeah. as well. And so it's always good to catch up with him. I'm super excited to chat with him soon. Yeah, awesome. And then we've got Rovember just started. First, things can we make out of the word November? That's the real question. Let's keep mm -hmm. trying. Okay, Rovember. Got it. So this is the fifth year in a row. Dark Horse Rowing is running Rovember. It is a month-long pre-holiday challenge. Shane Farmer at Dark Horse puts together a rowing workout every day for those who sign up. And you can still sign up. You can sign up at any point. And the goal is to complete as many of those rowing workouts throughout the month as possible. Last year, they had about 8,000 people sign up, and their goal is to get 10,000 this month. Dang, what a great idea. And you know what? We're all, all of us are always like, I need to improve my rowing form. <laughs> and how many, mm -hmm. us, how many of us are like, you know mm -hmm. what? For 30 days, I'm going to sit down and commit to it. So if, you, if you're one of those people, maybe now's your chance. Be like, here's the thing. Everything's going to be programmed for me. All I got to do is put yep. my butt on a Just rower. Sit your, butt, sit your butt in the seat. Actually, that's not all you have to do. But I guess you the, have to actually work out. <laughs> that's the start. And then one more thing, The Crown, which was an elite teen competition in Mallorca, Spain, run by the program and John Singleton last year, just released their documentary of their inaugural event. And the oh, thing cool. that is very cool about this event, so it focuses on teen athletes and for the first year, primarily um, European teen athletes. And it's kind of like a, if you're like old school, the, like the real world on MTV, these these athletes are are picked to live in a house, in this case, a castle, and do fitness uh, against one another for uh, several days. And it's super cool because of of where they're located in Mallorca. They last year were able to do beach runs and like a, a bike competition and a bunch of traditional CrossFit workouts. And it, they're partnered with Nike. And so wow. each one of the athletes kind of gets a full kit of, of Nike gear. And the qualifier for this year's event is has just begun. So we will have a story out in the newsletter tomorrow morning with links to the documentary, with links to their website and their qualifier information. So if you're an athlete between the ages of 14 and 20 and you want to try to qualify for, the, for this year's version of the crown, it is open now. Dang. Okay. So is there drama in the house the way that there is in the real world? Or is it really about the fitness? That's the real question. We, we talked to John about this and he said like he kind of expected there to maybe be a little tension because they're competing mm -hmm. against one another. He said it wasn't, it, they just all gelled, came together, cheering one another on. Like the stories you hear out of the Pit Fitness Ranch where the teens yeah. just all come together and, and, and cheer each other on and, and help each other throughout the week. Truly. I mean, John and I talk about this, <clears throat> John Woolley, not to be mm -hmm. confused with John Singleton, but John, mm -hmm. John and I talk about this on the show all the time that is something really magical is happening within the early stages of CrossFit when kids and teens are getting into it, where they are really just developing into 
wonderful, respectful yeah. young adults. And I suppose it's that way truly with anything that a kid really has to commit fully to. So any type of sport that they get pretty serious about or an academic subject they get really sure. serious about. Like if, if a young person has the drive to really commit to something, really work on something and maybe put some other fun stuff on the back burner mm -hmm. in order to get good at their specialty, then they oftentimes have the I don't know what it is. They have the focus or they have the wherewithal to also be kind of just kind and respectful and genuine human beings. So that's really great to see. Yeah, I love seeing these these kind of events being developed and things like that, because we've got a couple of really outstanding young athletes at, at my home affiliate, and they're always training alone. And mm. just because there there aren't dozens and dozens and hundreds of 14 year olds who are training at an elite CrossFit level. Right. Um, so when so when they are able to get together, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I agree. Know, it does something to them, too. There's something really special that happens that gives them more confidence and gives yeah. them some, yeah. a little bit of a little bit of juice to come home and continue training on their own if and when necessary. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, Nikki, that's well, what I have for today. Dang, Joe, that's a lot. Honestly, <laughs> there's a lot going on both on the on the competition side of things and also on the affiliate side of things. So thank you so much for coming and for sharing the news with us, for reviewing these headlines. If you guys have questions or want more information about what is going on, please do not hesitate to reach out to Joe. Uh-oh, Joe, I mm -hmm. just outed you there. His handle is here uh, mm -hmm. on, on the YouTube page if you guys are watching it there. Or check out the Morning Chalk Up that has links to these full stories with a lot more information and context and even more coming throughout the week as well. That is going to wrap it up for us here on the Weekly Buzz. Thank you guys so much for listening and we will chat with you soon.